Hey everybody, Dave Lerner. We're talking what's working with the CEO and founder of Recharge, Jason Aramburu and his new product, Black Revolution. Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you. Excited to be here. And for those who don't know, what is Rechar and his new product, Black Revolution? So Rechar is a for-profit social enterprise, and our mission is to grow more food and sequester carbon. And we've just launched a product called Black Revolution. It's the world's first carbon-negative replacement for soil. So that means that instead of emitting CO2 into the world and uh, accelerating climate change, this product actually captures and sequesters it. So how are you implementing it? We went to a town called Bungoma, deep in Kenya's breadbasket, and started teaching farmers about biochar, teaching them how to use it, make it, uh, everything about it. And we found that there was huge interest. And so we decided you know, we were going to go for it. And we've uh, scaled up our operations there. And now we actually have a factory on the ground in Kenya producing what we call a biochar kiln. It's a low-cost device to make charcoal. A bunch of farmers in Kenya see a few American guys show up, <laughs> and you guys are going to tell them how to do what they do best. Was there some reluctance initially? Absolutely. It's, it's challenging to get people in the developing world who are living on maybe $2 a day, and that's on a good day. It's hard to get them to do anything out of their routine, because it's very risky for them, especially when you're talking about their livelihood. We actually have a six-acre demonstration farm in this town. It's right on the main highway, so you can drive by, you see huge corn, and uh, people, people pull over and they're like, how do you grow corn like that? So you overcame the reluctance, and now, in a sense, would you call this six-acre plot your beta location? Absolutely. It's our beta location. It's our, our test farm. How have you guys gotten funding for all the stuff you've been doing? Our work in the developing world is funded through some strategic grants. Uh, we've gotten money from a group called Echoing Green, also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and then a foundation in the Netherlands called the Dune Foundation. How did you go about getting those grants? I would say our, our success rate is maybe one in ten for grant applications. You just have to be constantly looking for opportunities and basically pitching. It's, it's the same as pitching for investors, really. Give us a sense of what your metrics are. We just set up our big factory in Kenya. And so we've, I want to say, we've moved about 100 units of product so far. And each unit of product, each kiln, will uh, sequester about 10 tons of CO2. So that's roughly equivalent to two US cars driving for a year straight. But it's not only the CO2 sequestration, right? It's, I mean, you're actually feeding people here. Exactly. Right? I mean, isn't that the big, the big thing? And we found by using biochar, our Kenyan farmers, they typically see an improvement of 150 to 200 percent in their actual crop of maize. That's, that's the main crop that's grown there. Why did you decide to go for-profit as opposed to non-profit? I respect non-profits. I think they do great work on a lot of social issues and environmental issues. We're a very product-focused company. We're developing and selling technology. I didn't really know how we could use a nonprofit model there. It just, I come from the for-profit world. It makes sense to me. And I believe if you align your mission with what you're doing, you can make money and do good. So what advice would you give to folks watching the show who are thinking about pursuing a passion that they have that would be normally categorized as social entrepreneurship? Don't worry about the designation between nonprofit and for-profit. I think the trend with funders is they don't care, and increasingly they're not caring. Um, just go with what makes sense and what you feel comfortable doing. So let's say you really start scaling up and get a lot of success. Do you think some of the chemical manufacturers are going to get upset and come after you? It's possible. Uh, a friend of mine runs an organic fertilizer company. They make fertilizer from worm poop. And he got sued by a big chemical fertilizer company because the label of his product supposedly looked similar. And it ended up being a huge PR stunt for his company, brought a lot of people to their cause. So it was a good thing in the end. I think the chemical fertilizer companies are the dinosaurs, and they are you know, quickly becoming extinct. How do you take a concept like Black Revolution, which you can't patent because it's 3,000 years old, <laughs> and roll it out across the world? You can't patent the technology or the formula. You can patent your specific blend of product. But honestly, we're more interested in developing a brand and developing the, uh, connecting with consumers, knowing that we deliver a quality product. So uh, we launched a Kickstarter campaign, actually. Kickstarter has become a real interesting funding platform for new products. And we're pre-selling Black Revolution on Kickstarter to really get at that early adopter market. 
Beyond soil, what's next for the organic movement? Growing food is a full-time job. And so a lot of technologies are coming out where you can grow food in a window box with minimal, minimal effort. Um, that's kind of how we design Black Revolution. It's ready to go right out of the bag. You could drop seeds right in the bag and get vegetables in about a month. So I think people want, they want the ease of use of a personal computer that grows your own food. And I think that's coming. Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks a lot, this is great.